Question is from the Mind Muscle Project. Do you use microwaves? After diving into Paul Check's work, we can't help but hesitate every time we use one. <laughs> so, Paul, uh, you know, here's the thing. There's definitely he makes me paranoid about everything. There's definitely things I disagree with um, with Paul, um, and this may be one of them. Now, Paul, I think is one of the he's the the godfather of the wellness space. Uh, doesn't mean I agree with him every time, but the guy um, usually is spot on. Here's one where I disagree. Um, microwaves they heat up food in similar ways to heating up food with fire um some of the arguments are how it, it causes the atoms in food to jiggle and shake and that's what causes the heat well that still happens when you heat things up anytime you heat things up that happens the molecules and, move around yeah and some and there's there's evidence that even shows that microwaving produces less of the carcinogens and harmful things than fire does now i'm not gonna i definitely won't say microwaving is better than heating up over fire and the main reason why is because that's how we heat that's we haven't been microwaving things nearly as long so I'm pretty sure we evolved to do better with heating things up under fire. But no, I don't. I don't think there's any issue. I think with the it. I think the biggest argument with microwaving is the the leaching of plastic into the food, right? That that's true. Yeah. That's definitely true. If you microwave something, you need to. Yeah, use, you don't want to do that. You don't want to use something that's going to leak chemicals into your food. Just like you wouldn't use a plastic container over a fire either. You know? yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, think about that's it. True. There's yeah. nothing. It, Nobody's mean, doing that. Well, I mean, it's good to put it in context because yeah. somehow people think, the, oh, it's a microwave. It's something different and worse. Like, I wouldn't use a pla I wouldn't put my food in a plastic bag and put it over a fire either because it would melt the plastic. No, that's a really into good my food. That is, that is a great point. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's not that it's much it's, perspective. Yeah. It's much more invisible because yeah. of the microwave, the way microwaves work, it's not necessarily melting the container, although it can. It's really magic to me. I don't have no idea how that fucking Works, yeah, well, but. the way that there's waves that move through the food that causes the the molecules of food, the of water molecules within the food, to shake and jiggle, and that causes heat, yeah. and that's what warms up your food, and that's why it warms up kind of from the inside out. You ever notice how things kind of warm up? Strange sometimes in a microwave, yeah. I like the middle is hot, but the outside right. is. You get the cold spot. Yeah, you know, and you got to kind of you got to kind of mix it up or whatever. Mm -hmm. But no, man, they've been around for a while, and there is. To my knowledge, zero evidence that microwaving food is bad uh, besides what you warm it up in. Um, but I'm open to look at more evidence. I've read Paul Check's blogs on microwaves and some of the stuff that he that he quotes. You know, it's like there was a science experiment where a girl microwaved water, let it cool down, then she watered the plants and the plant didn't grow as much. And I'm like, I don't know if that's really a scientific study necessarily. Mm. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm open to looking at some of the stuff, but I'm not opposed to, to microwaving. It's like when you're fun. negative and you put that negative energy on the water and then it changes. Like, have you ever seen that? I have, have the, seen Well, you that. remember he had the, he has the fucking, his moon, his, the moon changes his water and shit. Oh, he has, the, he has the, the crystals in a circle. And yeah. it, that's, and it, that's next it level. It charges his water. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He's, he's just next hey, level. Look, here's, I, hey, here's the deal. Like, to me, it's uh, even if 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 it, his argument holds holds water, right? <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. Uh, even if, if even if it does, it's water under the bridge. Adam. It, there's so many other big rocks that I'm worried about first. You know, what I'm saying like that. That's the one thing I always try and and, and remind everybody who who hears like these these type of things that come out, like oh, the fucking plastics are going to kill us all. Oh, artificial sweeteners. Oh, it's like okay. Artificial sweeteners aren't going to kill you if you're over consuming 2,000 calories every single day and sitting on your couch. Like, well, you know, it's going to kill you over consuming 2,000 calories and sitting on your couch and not exercising is going to kill you before the artificial yeah, sweeteners. But before the freaking, you know, the nonstick pan. Yeah, or exactly. whatever. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. the, you know, it's there's there's a lot of other things that you should be doing and and putting your energy and and in your you know, thoughts into. Than a lot of Dude, this stuff. I okay. So let me give you guys an example. Um, I learned this as a personal trainer, and it took me, it took me a year or two to really figure this out. When I first became a trainer, and I would get a new client, the client would come to me and would tell me their goal, and I would because I had all the answers. I was like, oh great, we're totally gonna get you to lose thirty pounds. Here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna work out three days a week with me. You're gonna do cardio every single morning on these days. Here's your macro profile. Here's what you're gonna do for your macros. Here's your calories. I'm gonna write up a meal plan for you. And I would give them so much shit that they would do nothing. Right. Yeah. It's called information overload. Yep. Okay. You become paralyzed with too much information. Think about starting a business for people who are listening who are entrepreneurs. Those people who had who now have a successful business, imagine if all the information you know now, now that your business is successful, was thrown at you when you first wanted to start the business. You would have never started. Yeah. You, I, we wouldn't have started this podcast had we known the real risks and challenges that would have come with it. We were kind of 
excited and pumped and naive. We didn't know. We're like, let's do this. It's going to be great. Now that we know what we know, looking back, we're like, wow, that was really insane how we did what we did. This is true for anything. And what's happening with a lot of this, what, and this, is the, this is the wellness, this is what the wellness space does terribly. Yes. The wellness space, this is the problem with the wellness space, is they over saturate with so much fucking information on everything that people do nothing. Yep. So now rather than people eating a little bit less and, and moving on, a little and bit And honestly, less, the only the people that subscribe to it are the ones that don't even need it that much, right? Oh. It's the people that are already like super healthy. They're looking for like the next crazy level. Those are the people that adopt it and go like, oh, this is great. I'm so glad now I don't ever use my microwave anymore. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm using all this, you know, aluminum free deodorant and I'm doing all these fucking things. It's like, yeah, but I'm eating sh way too many calories <laughs> yeah. and I'm not active. You know what I'm saying? You got to look at all the things that are most important. Tackle those first. And until you tackle those, stop worrying about everything else because everything else isn't going to do shit for you. If you don't, you know, necessarily, if you don't tackle the big things first. And so, again, the wellness industry does this really bad. So now you got a bunch of people who are like, oh, I, I'm not supposed to microwave yeah. my McDonald's Big Mac. Now that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now that being said, the same thing that I, that, that I approach in the same way I'm trying like with like artificial sweeteners and stuff like that in, in my life is, you know, I just yesterday I was home and we had leftovers and maybe 10, 15 years ago, I would be naive enough to just throw my my plastic container in there and microwave it up for a minute 30 and then eat it straight out of there. Where now it's like, oh, I'm at home right now. I have my iron skillet that's already on the stove. I just dump my food in the skillet and light the skillet up and, and then cook it on my – and heat it up on my iron skillet and throw it back on a plate and I eat it that way. So I'll, I'll try and make what I think is a, a probably a better choice, but I sure as shit not freaking out or not going to – Heat my food up one day because the because of the microwave. Here's what the here's what the if you're if you're in the fitness and, and wellness space if you're in the health space and you really want to help people, you need to consider the following. You need to consider how you're communicating your information and how well it's being uh, uh, understood on the other end. That's a big fucking part of it because I you know look we live in the information age today. Right now, everybody has access to all the information that's ever been recorded. This is no longer a I don't know or I don't have the the information problem. It used to be 100 mm -hmm. years ago, people didn't know. They did shit and they didn't know it was bad. Well, today, there's tons of information and yet people are still getting fat. They're getting mm -hmm. fatter and health is still terrible. So it's not an information problem. We don't need to inundate people it's with shit. It's a filtering tons. problem. It's a, it's we're a not, prioritizing problem. We're not fucking selling it well, guys. You know, hey, we're not doing a good job. We're. I used to tell my, my sales guys this when they would give people a tour of the gym. They'd talk for two and a half hours. The person would walk out and wouldn't join. And I told them, I said, you talked them out of it. It was too much information. Fucking relax. Like, just communicate the important stuff. Do a good job with that. And you know what's going to end up happening? Here's what will happen. Let's say we do a good job and we sell to people in a very intelligent way that they need to start eating a little bit less, that they need to eat certain foods that make them want to eat less, so avoid the heavily processed food, that they should probably start eating more, that, oh, you only have two days a week to work out. Why don't you focus on weight training? Because that speeds up your metabolism. You get more bang for your buck. And then they do that. We do a good enough job that we sell those four or five things. They do a really, really good job. They do it, and they do it consistently. Well, guess what's going to happen next? Next, they're going to start looking at what chemicals should I take yeah. out of my diet? My, then they progress. Then they start to progress. But worrying about microwaving your food, I don't I, I don't think that's a that's a huge... Now, I, my mind can be changed. My mind can totally be changed. But up until now, the information I've seen, it's not... It's like it doesn't make the top 50 for me in terms of things that I'll ever communicate to a client. I leave it out uh, until I'm talking to the perfect client that's doing absolutely everything. They're like, hey, Sal, yeah. what's the next thing I should add? I'll but, put it in there with my EMF underwear. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're all absolutely free. You can also find us all on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and you can find me at Mind Pump Sal.